I'd like to finally, as our final speaker of the final day, invite Paul to come and speak to us. Paul's from Waikato. They have a very active sepsis program that's running alongside the Detroit Patient Program, and I'd like Paul to come and talk about that if possible. Paul's never met my children, so I don't have a review of him based on them, so I apologise in advance. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Alex, and thank, for the, thank you for the invitation to speak. So, uh, at the beginning of these talks, my heart races up to about 120. So, just while I steady myself, just allow me to indulge myself a little. So, the Tweed is my mountain, the Tweed is my river, the Scots are my tribe, my children are Whakapapa to Te Karaka on the East Coast, and I'm very connected to New Zealand, having spent 18 years here. I'm an infectious disease um, med uh, medicine and acute medicine doctor by training, and I think my interest in sepsis comes from working at the intersect between those two specialties, which after all is severe infection, and severe infection really means uh, sepsis. So I am going to progress the slides, make sure that we're all in control. I would like to try and talk to you about the, the, what I, the I, I'm trying to frame this talk for you by saying, asking you, um, are 1% of the adult population of New Zealand admitted to hospital with sepsis each year? That means something like one person in this room may be about to have a year where they have an admission to hospital with sepsis. Can I prove it? And is it possible? And um, thank you to the organisers for putting such a wonderful conference together. I've connected very deeply with some of the stories that have been shared. Um, I agree absolutely that stories are where we should start, but unfortunately data is where we need to go from there to prove the, the extent of the problems that we have in the healthcare system. Um, this is the story that I connect to um, at back home. Andrew Strawbridge is the defensive coach for the Chiefs. He was also the defensive coach for Manu Samoa when he rather dramatically fell ill with a staphylococcal infection and tried to die uh, in a Samoan ICU with Dave Geller um, looking after him. Repatriated back to the Waikato Hospital and spent a long time in the intensive care uh, of time of which he remembers nothing. It was looked after by his wife, Laura Findlater. And we're still in touch, and um, four years later, to, to, to continue to learn about their journey together. And this talk's really um, uh, devoted to, to those two very devoted people. So a global situation update. So the WHO have recognised there's probably 30 million cases of sepsis internationally, with 6 million deaths. A year. That's said to be a conservative estimate based on death certification. And they have sponsored in 10, 2017 uh, a World Health Assembly resolution which tried to put sepsis in focus at a governmental level. And the contents of the resolution that have been written require each country to write and uh, publicise and promote a national sepsis action plan amongst other things. And the other things are the three, what I now consider to be the three um, legs of the stool. Good infection control, good health infrastructure, and antimicrobial presentation, uh, preservation. So I believe that sepsis care should just be one part of looking after infections well in, the, in our healthcare system. They also um, encourage surveillance. Uh, since this is my what is sepsis slide. And if you're going to take the judicial the definition of sepsis, or um, you would um, call it, you'd say, I know it when I see it. That's Judge uh, Justice uh, Potter's definition of pornography, actually. I'll know it when I see it. And many of us function at that level. So sepsis is a syndromic condition. It's a clinical gestalt. We know it when we see it. People have got an infection. They look unwell. Unfortunately, we need uh, a better way of helping people to understand when they are and when they are not seeing sepsis so that we can do clinical trials so that we can extract sepsis cases from routine data sets. And we do this by defining what is infection, uh, what is organ failure, and then we use convenient data sets to, to try and estimate uh, burden of disease. And in Australia and New Zealand, we've almost always used intensive care data sets. So I thought we'd look at those um, and I was going to say, at the, at the intersect of all of those sets, you have what you call ICU sepsis. So let's look at that first. So because this is an ANZIX meeting, uh, most people in ANZICs will be very familiar with this study. Um, it's, if you're a glass half full person, it's fantastic. So 18% mortality in 2012 in an Australia and New Zealand ICUs, dropping from about 35% mortality back in 2000. 
Leading the authors to conclude um, of their work, our study provides evidence that sepsis-related mortality has steadily decreased over time, even uh, after adjustments for illness severity, centre effect, regional effects, hospital size, risk of being septic, and other key variables. A very carefully conducted study, a very reliable data set that makes use of Apache 2 and 3 coding to define who is and who isn't septic. And this is a measure that we've relied upon to, um, uh, I think, clap ourselves on the back and say that probably care for many people is somewhat better. Um, but the problem with this study, which was recognized early on, is that there was no a clinical comparator. So whenever you look back at a data set, a retrospectively coded um, data set, you're always going to have some error relating to uh, the, uh, the quality of the data that was entered into that and how the uh, definitions of sepsis perform um, within that data. And um, Simon Finfer and others, so Simon Finfer, Finfer and uh, Ronaldo Bolomo, obviously well known to each other, um, looked at the performance of the ANZIC's core definition of sepsis alongside a clinical definition of sepsis that was based, for those of you that are familiar with the literature, on the Prowess study, which was um, uh, uh, a, a well-known study of activated protein C use in people with um, sepsis. So uh, what they found was that if you take a robust clinical definition of sepsis and you put it alongside the ANZIC's core database, you actually find um, uh, you, you find very different things in your ICU. So the ANZIC's core database in the Sydney ICU uh, that the study was conducted in suggested that 11% of the ICU population were there with sepsis, and the clinical definition pointed to almost 17%. Patients with septic shock were overestimated by the Apache 2 and 3 based uh, ANZIX core definition, and there were somewhat fewer people with septic shock using clinical definitions. The mortality rate was higher if you met a clinical definition of sepsis, and your in hospital death, if uh, chance of dying in hospital if you had septic shock was 37%. So, really, not optimistic, not rosy, not happy data at all. And their conclusion was that database criteria significantly underestimate the instance of sepsis and overestimate the instance of septic shock, resulting in lower estimated hospital mortality rates for each condition. And the reason I've drawn these two studies out into the open is that it's an, it's an ICU meeting, and it proves that basically what you find is depending on where you look and how you look. And because this is a, this is a New Zealand audience, um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about what we know about infection in this country. So what we've known for a number of years now is that infection is the leading cause of admission to hospital. So 25% of all hospitalizations in New Zealand relate to infection. Uh, this comes from a study published by uh, Michael Baker, who works in Wellington, um, and which relied on uh, admission to hospital as a measure of severity. So this study was entitled Severe Infection in New Zealand. So we all know if you're admitted to hospital with a cough and a cold sometimes, you probably don't have sepsis. So this isn't the best way of looking at sepsis, but it shows you um, that infection certainly is a big problem, but also that it's actually um, uh, probably more of a problem as t uh, over time, and that uh, Maori and Pacific people living in New Zealand have an unacceptably high um, elevated risk of admission to hospital, as do people who are living at the extremes of socio-economic uh, deprivation. And I think sepsis is one way to get to the uncomfortable conversations we have to have about um, inequality in New Zealand. So what we did at Waikato District Health Board was a study to find out, okay, well, we know that infection is an issue. We know that, uh, uh, we, know that we can find people who have infection. We know that we can find people who are in hospital, but we can also superimpose organ failure. And that's a way of defining sepsis. And so the way you do this, or the way that we did it, was you we choose um, codes for infection on the one hand, codes for organ failure on the other, um, feed it into your um, admission data set, and hey presto, uh, in our district health board, about uh, 500 per 100,000 people are coded with sepsis every year. Um, that goes up to 2,500 per 100,000 population if you're age over 65. 17% of that group are admitted to ICU. If you're admitted to ICU, you've got a 37% chance of dying. Um, and, if, and overall, the mortality in, in our data set was 18% in hospital and 37% at one year. So if you compare that to 
stroke and myocardial infarction, which you, you all know about. There's great advocacy groups for stroke and myocardial infarction. Um, the, 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 the in-hospital death for those two conditions is around 5 to 6%. Um, so sepsis is really, of all of the major conditions that we deal with in the hospital, really the most likely to take your life. And then this is what usually happens next. Yes, but. We all know coding is rubbish, right? So I've already told you that you know, coding uh, methods perform uh, very differently. Um, well, they're not ideal ways of looking at sepsis, but they're convenient. And so is coding rubbish? Well, there's plenty of information to point to the fact that um, if you introduce new code, you can get an increase in measured sepsis incidence using da data like this. If you introduce the, the DRG system, into the Californian minimum data set, as they did in 2007, you can see an increase in codes for sepsis. And that's possibly driven by the need to get maximum reimbursement in the American healthcare system. So we know that that happens. We've also seen something called the laboratory paradox. So in most hospitals documenting an increase with sepsis over time, they're seeing stable rates of bacteremia or even falling rates of bacteremia and uh, lactatemia. So it's not completely understood what's driving that. Uh, but, uh, and so people are left wondering if big data based on coding is really any good. At the same time as saying that coding is rubbish, if you actually look at how it performs compared with uh, medical record review, it's actually rather good. It doesn't really matter what method you choose. Specificity is preserved and sensitivity uh, it tends to be uh, pretty poor overall. So um, the method that we translated to ICD-10 is thought to pick up about one in two cases of true sepsis in hospitalized populations. So we're left wondering if we're over or underestimating um, the incidence of sepsis where we work. So what you do then is you look for, well, who else is doing what and how else can you measure this? So this is Sweden. So uh, uh, there's uh, Kurt Wallander, for those of you that read novels just at the southern tip of uh, Skana. For those of you that have lost 50 hours to Vikings on Netflix, that's uh, Kattegat, right there in the middle. And uh, near Halland, um, uh, Satan Ibrahimovic comes from Malmo, just at the southern tips there, and Roxette, just a bit north. So um, the Swedes are fantastic people, and they've done a fantastic thing by creating what's called the infection tool in hospitals there. It's impossible to receive an intravenous antibiotic in Sweden unless you go on the infection tool. Uh, which is um, obviously something their Ministry of Health has developed and mandated. So what um, so authors working in, Holland, in, in Sweden were able to do was say, well, let's look at everyone who received an intravenous antibiotic in hospital at four different time points over one year in 2015. And what they found was that 30% uh, of that group met sepsis three cri clinical criteria for sepsis, and that led them to provide what must have been a very accurate measure of population incidence of around 0.8%. Uh, percent. So uh, 780 cases per 100,000 people living in Sweden. So we're comfortable that when we say that at least half a percent of people in the Waikato District Health Board are admitted with sepsis every year, we're correct. I think it's much higher than that. I think we're underestimating compared with clinical uh, and other methods of um, detecting sepsis. And uh, it really is a problem that we should be devoting more attention to. So the other reason to look at uh, data from coding is to look at trends. And it's been really interesting to have conversations with many of you in the room around who's taking care of sepsis. Um, where I work in general medicine, yeah, so you know, um, sepsis, if you're over 60, is a general medicine condition. It's not really going to intensive care, at least not in our hospital. Um, you do die more often the, uh, as you get older, and yes, comorbidity is a common feature, but isn't it with everything. The other thing that we see uh, in our data is that the nature of the organ failures changes with time. So I think of sepsis in people over 65 as being uh, uh, vasoplegia, so cardiovascular failure and renal failure. I tend to see very little in the way of respiratory failure requiring intubation. So I think we've got special um, subgroups of patients with sepsis at different age groups. I think we need to get better at deciding what we're treating and how we're going to go about doing it. So some of this has started to translate to um, using data to drive improvements. Um, we're now measuring how much sepsis there is on a quarterly basis, and we're able to say to management, look, 1.5% of all our admissions are for sepsis. That really catches people's attention. 
we're also starting to use data in a sepsis two orientated way. So we're now into the 18th month of our sepsis quality improvement program, which we're calling Sepsis Ready. We've collaborated with the UK Sepsis Trust, with the Clinical Excellence Commission, and uh, more laterally with um, ACC to try and um, make this better and better over time. And at the, at the very beginning of this, we were kept on being handed the cases. I want you to look at this case. It's a disaster. It's awful. It's a very sepsis one approach. We were kind of spending a lot of our time looking at all of the, all of the failures. And actually what we ended up doing was saying actually that that's really not our job. What I'd rather do is look at all the patients who are admitted to intensive care with sepsis and see how we do as we implement the program and feedback that performance to people so they know when they're doing well. And what I'm really pleased to say is that this is information we've put together for this talk. Um, just since the introduction of the Sepsis Ready program on World Sepsis Day in the beginning of September, the average time to see a doctor with sepsis in the emergency department has dropped from 44 to 22 minutes, with a peak of 360 minutes to a peak of 110 minutes. And that's with ex within existing resources, with existing staffing in, in one large emergency department. So we don't know if this translates to improvement in any outcomes or any of the other outcomes that we're measuring at the moment, but we're really, really pleased with this outcome, and I think it shows that a lot more can be done um, with some focus and attention. And I want to say focus and attention. Um, this is what a sepsis group should look like. So in addition to me, there's an intensivist in that picture, a pediatrician, an RMO, a patient advocate, uh, a cons consumer board member, an educator, a uh, nurse practitioner, nurse, and a rural medicine doctor. And that's a third of the sepsis action group in our hospital. Um, I've lost count after I got to 48 individual people who have sp spent more than uh, 20 hours working on this in the last year. Um, and it just, uh, it's a monumental effort required to, to change, but I think there's really reasons to be hopeful about sepsis, because when you really understand what you're trying to do and what tools are at your disposal to make a change, you can really go about it with, with vim. And so this is a, a harmless uh, but, but a blatant plug for the National Sepsis Trust, which we're hoping, so the New Zealand Sepsis Trust, which we're hoping will become a thing uh, before Christmas. So uh, sepsis.org.nz, thanks very much for inviting me to talk.